On June 18, 1996, police officers were on a routine patrol when they found a suspicious vehicle in the parking lot of a marina near Seattle, Washington. As reported by CNN, a woman and a teen boy were seen in the back seat of the car, but as officers approached, the woman jumped into the front seat. As the man appeared to be underage, they were both taken in for questioning. The woman was identified as 34-year-old Mary Kay Letourneau, and she claimed that the boy, Billy Falau, was visiting the home she shared with her husband and four children. She also alleged that he was 18 years old. In reality, Falau was only 12 years old and Letourneau was his teacher. The pair had already reportedly been intimate on several occasions. Despite rumors about the inappropriate nature of their relationship, Letourneau was not arrested until March 4, 1997, per biography. When Letourneau was arrested, she was already visibly pregnant with Falau's child. Their baby girl, Audrey, was born on May 23, 1997, per biography. Three months later, Letourneau pleaded guilty to second-degree child rape and was subsequently sentenced to three months in prison and continued probation following her release. As a condition of the plea agreement, Letourneau was prohibited from having any contact with Falau. However, within weeks of her release, Falau and Letourneau were found together again. Authorities also believed they were trying to flee the country after finding baby supplies, $6,200 in cash, and Letourneau's passport inside the vehicle. Letourneau was ultimately sentenced to seven and a half years in prison for violating the terms of her plea agreement. Eight months after she returned to prison, she gave birth to another child with Falau, a baby girl named Georgia. Letourneau was interviewed extensively for an A&E biography special about the case. Executive producer Brad Abramson told Fox News that Letourneau was particularly distraught about missing important milestones in all six of her children's lives. It was wrong, and I am sorry. The former teacher's first two years in prison were especially difficult. In addition to having conflicts with fellow inmates, Letourneau struggled to adjust to the strict environment and to taking orders from the guards. She was also caught attempting to correspond with Falau, despite an order forbidding her from contacting him per people. As a result of multiple infractions, she spent at least 18 months of her first two years in solitary confinement. When she began adjusting to prison life, Letourneau began writing in her spare time. While incarcerated, she co-authored a book with Falau, which was published in France, titled Only One Crime, Love. She also contributed to a book written by Greg Olson titled If Loving You Is Wrong. During her incarceration, Letourneau became an active member of one of the prison's religious organizations. In addition to regularly attending mass, Letourneau was a member of the prison choir. Letourneau utilized her skills as a former teacher by tutoring her fellow inmates and recording audiobooks for the blind. For people, she also encouraged the prison to increase the number of textbooks available to inmates who wanted to further their education. On August 4, 2004, Letourneau was released from prison after serving nearly seven years. An order prohibiting her from having any contact with Falau remained in place per Yahoo Life. After petitioning to have the order dissolved, they were engaged within two months of her release and married in May 2005. At the time, Letourneau was 43, while Falau was 21. Although the entire situation remains controversial, Letourneau and Falau both insisted the relationship was consensual, although critics maintain that Falau was not old enough to consent to a relationship with an adult. The situation was made even more disturbing by the fact that Letourneau was in a position of authority over the boy as his teacher. Letourneau and Falau were married for 12 years before Falau filed for legal separation, and the divorce was finalized in 2019. In 2020, it was announced that Letourneau had died of cancer, having been diagnosed only six months before she died. Following her diagnosis, Letourneau expressed regret for her actions, with an unnamed source telling people, she realized that even though things turned out relatively good, that she was responsible for a wide swath of destruction by her actions.